Hello again, this is David Hersman of Eagles Wings Ministries. Welcome to Lesson 6 in a series of seven lessons focused on how God has revealed himself to man and continues to reach out to us in many ways. We are in a fallen world, scarred by sin and death, but God has not left us in the dark. He has spoken to all mankind throughout all history and in every place through the witness of creation through the inner knowledge of right and wrong in our conscience, then through the prophets of the Old Testament, not everybody's had access to that, and through his Son, Jesus Christ, through the written word he has given us and preserved it for us, and today we are going to see how God continually reveals truth to us through the pages of history. It's often been said that history is his story, and that is absolutely true. You can't study any portion of history without coming across absolute indicators that it is his story. Much of the Bible is history. God recorded these events for us because he wanted us to learn from history. Some people claim that all we learn from history is that you don't learn from history. If that's true, it's very sad. Well, it is true that if we aren't paying proper attention, we will not benefit from history as much as we could and should from those people, events, and philosophies of the past. Still, the world is what it is today because some people have learned in a positive way from the events of history, while others have sought to follow the darkness, the evil, and the destructive paths from the worst of ancient men. The written history of the Old Testament not only gives us the law of God, but also gives us hundreds of examples of how God deals with individuals today, with civil and religious leaders, with churches, even business principles. We can see the devastating and inevitable results of sin and of rebellion against God. The New Testament not only gives us an outline of the earthly ministry of Christ, and the plan of salvation, but also his story of the early church in the first century following his life, death, resurrection, and ascension, and his promise, I will come again. Shortly after the death of the apostles, there was a great persecution by the Roman Empire against the church, that's the followers of Jesus Christ. This continued through the third century after Christ, when Constantine came to power, and became a professed believer in Christ, he legalized Christianity and stopped the intense persecution. Then a few decades later, after his death, Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. So, everything worked out okay for the Christians, right? Wait a minute. Not so fast. All governments tend to endue themselves with more and more power based on their own self-serving authority. The official Christianity of the Roman Empire quickly deteriorated into a massive, powerful church state, forcing its own dogma and control upon almost all the known world of that time. Wicked men cannot control people who are free to know the truth, to circulate the truth, so they soon prohibited the people to have personal access to the Word of God and to just give the priesthood, trust the priesthood, to tell them what to believe and what to do. Many people couldn't read anyhow and had limited access to the few handwritten materials of that time. This starvation for the truth plunged the world into a thousand years of darkness known as the Dark Ages. It seems now that secular educators are not wanting to call it that, the Dark Ages, anymore because they deny that the rejection of God and His truth and the principles of his word are responsible for the period of decline we have always known as the Dark Ages. These times were dominated by devastating religious wars, evil monarchs who claimed that God had set them on their thrones, therefore whatever they chose to do had the approval of God. This was called the divine right of kings. Personal rights, property rights were stripped away, almost totally non-existent. 
The average person was a peasant or a serf under the lordship of powerful landowners, and all of them subject to evil kings and queens. There was little or almost no freedom for the advancement of music, art, architecture, medicine, or literature. But God was still on the throne. In the 1400s, God initiated a sequence of events that almost seemed insignificant to each other at first, but worked together to change the world. The first was the Protestant Reformation gave rise to the restoration of the biblical truth that the just shall live by faith. That's found in the Old Testament and the New Testament. God used Martin Luther to initiate a restoration of the truth, that eternal salvation comes through personal faith in Jesus Christ, not through the dogmas, the ceremonies, the rituals, or the rules of any earthly organization or man. About that time, translators were beginning to translate the scriptures into the languages of the common people, including English. Even though their activity cost many of them their lives, their dedication still impacts our lives today. About the same time, the printing press was being perfected to the extent that thousands of Bibles or other literature could be made in a relatively short time. Thousands more people were learning to read and had personal access to God's truth. We are going to terminate this lesson right here and divide it into two parts. I'm trying to make each lesson short enough that a great number of viewers will watch it to the end. So we, we will be publishing Lesson 6, Part 2, in a few days. We pray that these lessons will be a blessing, an encouragement, and a stimulation to you. At the end, you will see a couple picture links to other Eagle's Wings videos and additional content. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. You can help spread the news about these lessons by simply liking, sharing, and subscribing to this channel. Remember, God is reaching out to you. Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest.